Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and in this video we'll continue to talk about FastAPI. Uh, this video is more like a continuation or a part of a short crash course series for FastAPI. Since uh, if you guys have been following this channel, you know that we build a lot of stuff around LLMs and uh, we always need a lightweight server for that. And hence for that we use FastAPI and if you want to build a lightweight server or a server which fits best for your LLM based application or your SaaS product even, or your different horizons of applications, then do follow through and let's get into it. So previously we've talked about how you can create an endpoint uh, in FastAPI, how you can just build a FastAPI server from ground up, uh, what kind of stuff you need. We talked about query parameters, we talked about optional parameters, we talked about path parameters, basic stuff and we got our application and our lightweight server up and running so that was it in the previous video this video is a continuation where we will be building crud api we'll be building four endpoints for uh creating updating reading and deleting a particular item and yeah so that's so that's what this is about so we have our basic structure over here a very lean version of fast api we have basically imported FastAPI object here. We have initialized our FastAPI instance over here, and we have created a simple route, which is more like a root route. Uh, when you hit the root, you will get a JSON object, which just says, hello world, and that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and create a product array in which we'll be saving all the products. Uh, let's go ahead and create the first route where we will be uh, creating a product. So this would be post. And for that, we will be stating product. So create product. Next, we will be creating the product using create product method. And then we have product. The type is dictionary. Uh, and products.append, we'll be appending our product over here. Once everything is good to go, we'll be returning the same product that we received. So let's hit save. Let's go ahead and run our fast API project. And let's go to docs. And here we go. We have our post endpoint over here. Uh, the example body is empty. So we're going to try it out. And Let's go ahead and type in, um, let's say I need ID and let's say ID is one. Next, I need name. And this would be, let's say iPhone 14 Pro Max. Perfect. And let's go ahead and type in description. And I can say blah, blah, blah. I don't have anything creative at the moment. So let's go ahead and execute. So our API is executed and we get the product in return, which means the product has been saved within the API. So what we can do for a better implementation is that we can print the product array as we sort of update it. So I would say print products. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and hit this one more time. So, okay, everything is updated. Execute. So we get the product. And here, as you can see, here we get our products array. So the product is appended to the product array over here. Perfect. So this is our create route. And now we need to, yeah, sure. We can get a particular route. So we can say app.get product and then we have uh, the definition of the product but the suggestion was to uh, sort of return all the products no we don't need that um, sure we can have such a endpoint as well where we get all the products and then we can have a separate endpoint where uh, we can build or you know fetch a product with specific product id so let's go ahead and build that let me scroll this here and here you go so uh, to get a particular product we are passing through product id as our 
a path parameter, which is an integer, and we're just going to fetch the product ID. So we don't have a particular product ID parameter or attribute. We just have ID. So maybe this would do. And we can replace it over here and over here. Perfect. Let's go ahead and run it since everything is updated. So what I'm going to do is let's see. So we have get products. We have product ID over here and product. Let's see what the products actually. So this is so this will return an empty array because we have nothing at the moment. Let's go ahead and create a product. So I'm going to say try it out. And ID one should have copied it name. But you guys understand the pain, right? You don't want to do this again and again uh, for testing. So we're going to do something about it. iPhone Pro Max and description. Description and description should say blah. Perfect. So we executed the product is return. It's part of the array right here. And now we're going to try our get endpoints. So firstly, we'll get all the products. So we only have one. So there we go. This is working. Then let's try a specific product. Try it out. And I'm going to try one execute. And it says internal server error. All right. So what we can do, we need to create a for loop. So products and products. And we need to check if a particular ID exists within the product. And then if it doesn't, we'll just return product not found. Pretty simple stuff. All right. The server is working. I have one here. Let's go ahead and execute. So the product wasn't found since I think that's because since the server refreshed, so we lost, ah, we lost the products. But you guys get the idea. It's working fine. So, oh, wait. My stuff is still pre filled, so I just can't create a product real quick. So, okay, the product is created. And I'm just going to go here and execute. And voila, it's working fine. Perfect. So, within the whole process, while posting stuff, it's kind of a task for me. I have to type in everything. And that's exactly not how we do it when we we're creating a server, whether it be a lightweight server, we still need some structure to the inputs, something that we can validate, right? So that's pretty so that's particularly missing uh, within our code right now. So let's go ahead and do it. So what we can do, we can leverage the pedantic library and which sort of helps us to import a base model. So Pydantic is basically a Python library for data and, you know, structural management around creating interfaces or classes uh, and creating models that you can leverage in a more uh, object oriented manner. So let's go ahead and create that particular model. So for that, as you can see, I've been suggesting so it does half of the work for me. You guys see what I'm saying? So I just have to type in like one or two letters and it just generates everything by itself. I just love this latency of code stroll. All right. So we have ID. Yes, we need an ID. We have name. We have price. Yes, we need a price. Let's get rid of brand over here and let's just say uh, description. And it can be a string. Perfect. So I'm going to copy product. So this is more like an interface or a type based interface that I can use within my APIs. So I'm just going to copy product and I'm going to go ahead to uh, create product. All right, this and I'm going to replace this dictionary with the product uh, interface that we have just created. And let's go ahead. Uh, everything is refreshed. Let's go ahead. And now when I go to product, you can see we have 
a nice looking schema based structure ready for us. All I need to do is hit try out and just pre fill stuff. I don't have to type in anything. So this is what I was saying. So it sort of eases up the process, right? Uh, price, let's say $900. Not sure it's $900 these days, but yeah, whatever. Blah, and boom. Perfect, no errors, everything is working. Now, one more thing. Let's say I sort of go ahead and remove the description. And I just say like two iPhone Pro Max, 14 Pro Max, whoa. 15 Pro Max, sure. And if I hit execute now, I'm gonna run into an error which says uh, there's a description missing, field required, right? So the uh, the error is quite elaborative, but the problem is that I don't have the option. I have to prefill everything that I've stated over here. So everything that's part of this class model should be provided to the API, which is kind of nuts. I, I believe uh, we need to keep some of the stuff optional and Obviously, just like a real life scenarios, there can be fields that we just don't want to provide or we just don't have to provide, right? So what we can do here, uh, we can keep string and we can say or none is equal to none. So it's pretty similar of how you can define the optional parameter, something that we covered within the previous video. So uh, this is pretty amazing. So everything is refreshed. Let's go ahead here and try it out all right i have to do a lot of typing today all right so i've pre-filled all the details i'm going to go ahead and remove description and hit execute and now we get no error but we get description as null something that we intended so now uh description happens to be an optional parameter or an optional attribute for this particular model i'm not sure if Okay, it's not stated here. It says request body is required, but you guys get the idea. There's another way you can achieve this, and this is through the optional parameter over here. So uh, you can type in optional string none. We don't need stock, so just gonna remove it. Hit save. Everything is refreshed. Uh, let's copy this because we'll be needing this in the next iteration and try it out, paste, hit execute, and bingo. So there are two ways, and these are two ways you can keep a particular um, attribute optional. Perfect. So I think we're done with our uh, product listing case. We're done with our get product case. Uh, we're done with our uh, create product case. Let's go ahead and cr create the update route for that. So this would be put and it's like code scroll is reading my mind, you know? I just have to go through it. So for the update product, obviously I need the ID itself. I need the product, the new version of the product or the updated product. So I am just gonna loop it through and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna uh, enumerate the product list and we would be tracking the index and the product itself if the PID is equal is equal to the ID provided by provided within the uh, path parameter. If it's sort of equal to it, then we sort of update the whole product and return the product. Otherwise, we return the uh, product not found error. Perfect. Pretty simplistic. Let's go ahead and check it out over here. Again, uh, we will need to create the product first since the server restarted. So one name, let's say Coke and price 10 and empty string or boom, the product is created. Now let's go ahead and put, so try it out. So ID happens to be so we kept ID as one, right? Yeah, we kept it as one. Now we need to say one and 
we can say Diet Coke and price 15 and no description. So let's go ahead and execute and we get a error. All right, PID product object is not subscriptable. All right, all right. So I've changed the subscript to an object notation. So it's it should have been p.id. And now that we come here, uh, and if I hit execute, it should send me the updated product. Perfect. So we're done with almost all the endpoints here. Uh, the one endpoint that is left is delete. So for delete, all we need to do see read my mind so for delete uh, we need a particular path parameter this should be an integer we loop through the products and if p oh it didn't use the subscript sign so it's smart so p.id is equal is equal to id and we delete the product and we send out the message that the product is deleted otherwise we say product not found simple stuff all right so for before we begin let's close everything let's refresh now here to, here we have the delete route but first we'll have to create a particular route here so let's go ahead and do that again have to type coke and price 10 no description and we hit execute and we come at the bottom, we say, try it out. We provide the ID with one and we execute and our product is deleted. So here we have our nice CRUD model. And that's how basically you can uh, sort of achieve CRUD APIs through, uh, you know, leveraging fast API server. There's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can um, state, for example, uh, in terms of validation, we haven't done anything, but the next video would be dedicated around validation and how we can validate that the IDs provided are non-zero, are not negative, and uh, the products that we are providing, they have the right kind of fields. And if we want to set some metrics around those fields, if we want to set some checks around those fields, then how we can do that. So we'll be discussing that in the next video. Stay tuned and thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.